All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about measures of dispersion. This is also called variability. So dispersion variability gets at the same underlying concept. It's another form of descriptive statistics. So when we're talking about measures of dispersion, we're talking about the way that data are spread around this central value. We talked about a few examples of central values that we'll use in our class, measures of central tendency, right? The mean, the median, and the mode. So we're gonna talk about how might we capture spread around these values. I think that one of the common misconceptions is that when we use statistics, we fail to realize people are different and that a statistic doesn't describe everybody. Uh, I don't think that that's true of people who actually do statistics. So perhaps now with a little bit of information, you'll avoid the temptation to think that an average is intended to describe every individual. If I talk about the average GPA in my class, I don't mean to say that this average describes every single person in my class. Rather, this average describes my class as a whole. Remember, statistics describe samples and are used to infer about populations. So it's not meant to describe the individual person. However, it does describe them so far as they are part of the group, right? So each person's data informs central tendency, but central tendency is not about any particular individual, it's about the collective. So there we understand in statistics that individuals are not going to all be the exact value. In fact, if the average GPA for my class is 3.492, Chances are no student actually has that exact GPA value. However, that value describes the class as a whole and is a good estimate if I have nothing else to go on of what I might expect a student to do, right, as far as GPA. But then we realize that everyone varies around this value and that's where we're gonna look at variability or dispersion as a critical component to consider in statistics. So just like everything else we've dealt with, Measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion both depend on your data or the, the scale of measurement that you're working with. So each of these mathematically minimizes a particular type of error that you might make. So what do we mean by error? I don't mean mistake. I mean, if I use this value to try to predict a random score from that group, right? So if I get an average GPA and I use that to try to predict an individual GPA, there will be a discrepancy, a difference between the individual GPA and the expected or sample average GPA. That discrepancy is the error that we're talking about here. So each measure of central tendency minimizes a particular type of error. The mode minimizes what is called count error because the mode is the most frequently occurring value. If I am simply saying, was I right? Yes or no, right? So was this value that person's value? And if it wasn't, I call it an error, right? So I'm just counting right, not right, right, not right. The mode, because it's the most commonly occurring value, will obviously minimize the number of times you are not right. Does that make sense? So mode minimizes count error. The median minimizes what is called the absolute error. So an absolute value is like this, right? The absolute value of X. And what that means is, I always make that value, whatever it was, it's always gonna now be a positive value, okay? So if I take a score, some individual score, and I subtract the expected value, in this case, the median, which is X tilde, if I subtract that and I get the absolute value of that, that is an absolute error. So what I'm looking at here is, the absolute value of the difference between an individual score and the median, right? So the median will minimize absolute error. It's a mathematical truth, it'll always be the case. Now, the mean minimizes squared error, okay? So the idea here is that if I take an individual score and I subtract the sample mean, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take those values and I'm going to square them, right? Now you might say, why am I going to do this weird thing? Why am I going to square these values? Well, the reason is because if you don't do that and then I get a sum, so sigma, the summation operator, right? If I get a sum 
of these deviations, and I don't either make them absolute value, like I did for the median, or square them, like I do for the mean, then what ends up happening is they all sum for the whole group to zero. Why? Because some people are above and some people are below, and they will end up washing out. So you have to make sure that all the values end up being positive in some way. If you don't do that, then your errors are going to sum to zero, which is not a useful measure of total or summed error, right? Because obviously you did, you will mispredict. Every person's score, these values here, is not going to equal the average or the median, whatever it may be. So you have to square those terms to avoid that issue. So these are important things to realize that every measure will minimize certain types of error and will go along with certain types of data and measures of central tendency. 